Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question asks if I can analyze the mental health and personality factors that may be at work in the life and death of Edgar Allan Poe. Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. So here I'll start with the background of Edgar Allan Poe and then move to the mental health and personality factors. Starting with the background, Edgar Allan Poe was born on January 19, 1809 in Boston, Massachusetts. At that point, he was known as Edgar Poe. There was no Allen. His parents, David and Elizabeth Poe, were traveling actors. Poe had an elder brother and a younger sister. Poe's father left the family in 1810, and Elizabeth Poe died from tuberculosis in 1811. She contracted tuberculosis when she was pregnant with Poe. Three days after Elizabeth died, David Poe died. The early 1800s was a rough time as far as remaining alive. The average life expectancy was around 37. Tuberculosis was very common at that time. It caused a lot of deaths. Between the years of 1810 and 1815, more than 25% of the deaths in New York City were attributed to tuberculosis. Unfortunately, even though there are treatments available for it now, it still kills about a million and a half people each year worldwide. After the death of Poe's parents, Poe and his siblings were separated. He was taken in by a childless couple from Richmond, Virginia, John and Francis Allen, who added the name Allen. So this is how we get Edgar Allan Poe. Poe got along well with Francis, but John was not affectionate, he was distant, and he was cold. The couple never actually officially adopted Poe, but they functioned as his parents through his childhood and adolescence. They traveled to Scotland and England. Poe would be there for five years, where he received a classical education. This education would continue back in the United States at the University of Virginia. But Poe had to drop out because he was losing money gambling. Poe started writing poetry at age 13, and he started drinking alcohol at age 17. He enlisted in the United States Army in 1827. He would be discharged in 1829. After that, he went to the U.S. Military Academy at West Point. He asked to be expelled shortly thereafter. Poe continued writing when he was in the military. At first, he didn't get much recognition, but eventually this would change significantly. Poe was a prolific writer of both poetry and short stories. He wrote a number of works in the horror, mystery, and detective fiction genre. It has been argued that Poe actually started the whole idea of a detective story with the publication of The Murders in the Room Morgue in 1841. In 1835, Poe went to Baltimore and obtained a marriage license so he could marry his cousin, Virginia Clem. At this time, Poe was 26 and Virginia was 13. It's not clear exactly when they officially became married. As Poe's career was picking up, he suffered with episodes of depression and he struggled with alcohol use. In January 1842, Poe noticed the first signs that Virginia had tuberculosis. After this, he increased his intake of alcohol and sustained this higher level of drinking for the next five years. Poe lost many opportunities in his career because of drinking. He aggravated a lot of people. His work habits weren't very good. He would show up intoxicated and then say it was something else, like he would blame his behavior on being sick but people knew that he was drinking. In January 1845, Poe published a poem named The Raven, which was a massive success. It's often referred to as one of the greatest poems ever written. It's certainly my favorite poem. In 1846, Poe moved to New York to an area now referred to as the Bronx. Virginia died there in January of 1847. Poe then went to Rhode Island, where he became engaged to Sarah Helen Whitman, but the relationship failed due to Poe's excessive use of alcohol. Poe then went back to Richmond, Virginia, and resumed a relationship with a love interest he had met named Sarah Elmira Royster. Poe traveled to Baltimore in September of 1849. On October 3, he was found on the streets of Baltimore in a state of delirium. He was taken to the hospital where he would die on October 7 at 5 a.m. His cause of death is unknown, all of the records from his stay at the hospital, including his death certificate, are missing. There are many possible causes of death, 
As I mentioned, the life expectancy wasn't really too long back then. A lot of illnesses that would not normally kill somebody these days would prove fatal back in the mid-1800s. He could have died from alcohol poisoning, alcohol withdrawal, like delirium tremens, lung infection, brain hemorrhage caused by prior head trauma, rabies, syphilis, epilepsy. It's also possible he took action to deliberately end his own life. It's really impossible to know without any records. Now moving to the mental health and personality factors. Let's take a look at his potential personality profile. I like to conceptualize personality using the five-factor model. I remember the big five traits through the acronym OCEAN. Openness to experience, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and eroticism. So we see here a high level of openness to experience. This seems to be pretty clear. He had an interest in the arts. He was intellectually curious, creative, and invested in fantasy. He had mid-range conscientiousness. He was productive as a writer, but he was impulsive and irresponsible in other areas of his life. We see mid to low extroversion. He was good at analytical thinking. He was not particularly outgoing or friendly. He needed alcohol in order to talk in front of a large group of people, but he may have been sensation seeking and he was described as grandiose. So that's why I went with mid to low instead of low. We see low agreeableness. Poe argued with his fellow writers frequently throughout his career, accusing them of all types of bad behavior. Many of his accusations were unsubstantiated. The last trait is neuroticism. His level was high. He was depressed, anxious, gave in to temptations frequently, and was angry. Poe had many stressors in his life. It's hard to know what really led to his depression and substance use. A look at some of the stressors. He lost his parents and was separated from his brother and sister at the age of two. He had a contentious relationship with John Allen. We see the death of Francis Allen caused him a lot of stress. He lost his wife in 1847, and even though he's remembered as quite successful, he struggled to have a career as a writer and only achieved success later in his life. Even with this, he never made a lot of money from his work. So, in one sense, he never really achieved the success he may have wanted. The death of Francis Allen and Virginia Clem inspired a good deal of Poe's writing. This, combined with his depression, led to melancholy content featuring a lot of themes around death. Nothing really went well for Poe after Virginia's death. He was put in jail briefly for public intoxication and started becoming increasingly erratic in his romantic relationships. He attempted to overdose on a drug containing opium. Many believe that Poe decided to bring an end to his own life. He had a tremendous number of risk factors for this behavior, like all the stressors I mentioned before. He witnessed a lot of death, he had a lot of loss, but he also had the history of depression, substance use, and gambling, a really undesirable combination of factors. Death was a major theme of his work. It's hard to imagine somebody writing the work that he wrote if they were in a positive mood. Poe wrote quite a bit in his life, and there's this theory that the information from somebody's writing can be used to determine their mental state. This is certainly not a perfect method, but some inferences can be made that in theory are better than just guessing. Considering there's not much else to go on in the case of Poe, like there are not many other records, certainly nothing like video or audio recordings, those didn't exist at that time, this type of linguistic analysis is really one of the few remaining options. Interestingly, there have been a number of studies that have connected certain linguistic styles with severe depression. In instances where this has occurred, we see that the people used an increased number of first-person singular pronouns, and they used a decreased number of first-person plural pronouns, suggesting that they're feeling disconnected from the world. They see themselves as alone, not as part of a society, not as part of a group of people. Also, the use of words connected to positive emotions decrease, and the number of words associated with negative emotions increase. This makes a lot of sense based on what we know about depression. There's actually software designed to conduct this type of language analysis, and we see a study in 2020 that conducted this type of analysis using the writings of Edgar Allan Poe. Now, this study analyzed not just his poems and short stories, but also his letters. This type of analysis not only looks at the counts of certain language usages, like the word counts, like certain words coming up so often, but it also looks at a change in writing style over the course of years. 
The results of this study indicated that Poe was depressed during his life. This really isn't surprising at all and didn't tell us anything new. However, not all of the results were expected. The analysis showed that Poe's depression levels went up and down, and he was not particularly depressed after Virginia died. Now, at first, this may not make a lot of sense, but when looking at the nature of tuberculosis and how it affected people during that time when there was no good treatment, this finding about depression seems more reasonable. The outcome of Virginia's illness was not known, even though the prognosis was certainly negative. Tuberculosis did not kill everybody who had it. Virginia had good days and months and bad days and months. There were points during her illness when Poe thought she was going to recover and other points when he was certain she would die. This put a tremendous amount of stress on Poe. His emotions went from low to high and back to low repeatedly for five years, right? So he was just being tortured by her slow death. As is the case with many people who have a loved one who goes through an extended illness, he could have felt some relief upon her death. At least at that point, there was certainty. He had a certain outcome, and he could move on with other romantic pursuits, which of course he did quite quickly. At this point, there would be no more false hope, and he had held out hope for quite a long time. Again, it kind of cycled back and forth. There are no diagnostic records for Poe, and of course there's no way to know for certain what mental disorder he had, if any. But many people believe he had major depressive disorder, but he also could have had something like persistent depressive disorder, bipolar disorder, or even something else, even depression tied in with another illness. Like it could have just been substance use disorder, and there were symptoms of depression that maybe would have gone away if he stopped drinking. His biological father and his brother both consumed alcohol excessively. Poe did as well. So I think it is quite reasonable to believe he could have had substance use disorder. So looking at the study with depression and language usage, does this tell us anything about what he did in his final moments? Like, did he do something to end his own life? It's impossible to know. He could have done this, but even if he did not, he behaved in a way that was so reckless that he should have known that his life was in jeopardy. So perhaps he didn't do anything intentional as much as he did something reckless. Maybe he was indifferent to life or death. Those are my thoughts on Edgar Allan Poe. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be interesting. Thanks for watching.